worship his name and glorify him. Lift your hands to heaven. I want to see everybody with their hands up. Let's glorify Jesus and magnify his holy name. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Where would we be and what would our life look like without Jesus? You're worthy of all the glory. You're worthy of all the praise, Jesus. Oh, we magnify Jesus.
We worship you, Jesus. I love what Reba said yesterday. If I, I hope I get it right. It just tastes delicious in here. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Do you love the presence of God more than anything else? If you do, I want you to lift both hands to heaven just one more time. And, and just not even because I said to you, Lord, we magnify you. Lord, we glorify you. Lord, we glorify you. Lord, we glorify your name. To you be the glory. To you be the honor, praise. We magnify. We glorify. We lift up our voice. We lift up our voice. We lift up our voice. We lift up our voice.
one more time with your hands lifted up. Can I hear a roar of worship in this place? Jesus, thank you for all that you've done for us. You're not only our Savior, but you're our Lord. That means your word and your plan has final authority in our lives. And we are so grateful that that plan has brought us here to this morning. And we have come with great expectation, our faith released, that all the needs are met, answers come deliverance, healing, manifestations, impartations. We've come to receive them, to take them by faith. Father, it's faith that pleases you and we've come to be pleasing to you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We'll turn to somebody before you're seated and give them a great big welcome. God bless you. Good to be with you this morning. Good morning, everyone. Good to see you this morning. Thank you for joining of us, joining us, all of you visiting, uh, the folks that are watching by live stream. We're happy to have you with us on our Sunday morning service, continuing with our Holy Ghost meetings. Uh, we have a special guest, of course, this morning. He's not only our preaching guest, he is our member, our most distinguished and world traveling member of World Harvest Church. He loves to remind us. And so I'm reminding and letting all of you know, if you didn't know, he is a member here. Uh, <laughs> but we'll, we've got just a couple of items of business before we get our member up here to minister to us this morning. Uh, the member. You are the member. Say that again. Among many. We ask that you silence your phones, electronic devices, if you would now. The service tonight, again, will be at 7 p.m. Uh, we'll continue, and you can come in. The sanctuary door is 30 minutes before. The front door is an hour before. Uh, come to the bookstore, cafe. We have child care available this morning, ages 0 to 5. There is going to be Spanish translation available online and in person for all of the services. You can visit the information center in the foyer for more information. If you're watching by live stream, you can go to DufresneMinistries.org slash translate. That's a wonderful feature we're able to offer you uh, for these set of meetings. So avail yourself to that. Any full-time five-fold ministers with a 501c3, if you did not pre-register, make sure you go to the information center in the foyer. Please fill out registration and we can get some information to you uh, regarding parking and some other things. And then if you're a minister here and you want the CD and DVD set of these meetings, make sure you order by tomorrow to ensure that they are ready for you to take home Wednesday. If not, we will ship them to you if you order them after that. And then uh, we are always welcoming, encouraging, uh, and uh, requesting testimonies from this week. Anything uh, that has uh, been a result of these meetings or past meetings. One thing I like to encourage at our, our Miracle Crusades is many people come or they're watching and some things have uh, transpired. God uh, they saw some manifestations of things, be it in their finances, in their body, since the last time we were together and things they, they revelation they received from that meeting. We want to hear about that. We want you to testify about the goodness of God, the faithfulness of God, what his word has done in your life. So if you have a testimony, please uh, make sure that you turn that in. We've got testimony cards in the foyer. You can get uh, online and submit them online. You can get submit them via any of the social media platforms 
platforms, message us. We would love to hear that about that. David Ellis is going to be doing worship training sessions tomorrow afternoon and Wednesday, and we're saying an hour after the morning service. So right now there's no specific time, but it's gonna really be an hour after that morning service. We will announce the start time so that you'll have time to get lunch, uh, but not a lot of time to kind of wait around. We wanna get started right away. So join us for the worship training sessions. That's open to everyone. Uh, that's not just for those that sing. I come, I don't sing, I don't play, but I love being here. The presence of God is here. The teaching is tremendous. So we encourage you, if you've got the, the opportunity, be here. And if you would like, you can go to prayer school tomorrow at one o'clock, Wednesday, uh, tomorrow through Wednesday at 1 p.m. in our, uh, let's see, room I, which is our youth room. You would know that is room I is at the back here of the building. You come around this hallway and right behind the sanctuary is room I. And that's with pastors Noel and Ruby Ramos. Uh, they will be in there and uh, their team so we have a whole group that does helps with prayer and healing school. And, and so if you say worship training session doesn't seem right for me, prayer school would be awesome if you could in, in, enjoy uh, or it, it, and we invite you to come and enjoy yourself being with us at time of prayer and teaching uh, at one o'clock. And then Double Up Offering is gonna be on Tuesday night. That's Double Up Offering night because we don't have a Thursday night service. <laughs> it's normally Thursday, but when or Tuesday night is uh, going to be Double Up Offering night. Wednesday night, there will of course be ministry to the sick. But as you know, in our services, there is always seeming every service, some form of ministry to those who have physical uh, needs in their body. And then we've got some upcoming conferences already on the, the, the docket. Prayer conference, April 9th through the 11th. Camp meeting, June 3rd through the 7th. Jesus the Healer Crusades uh, are going to be right now in Paducah, Kentucky, May 5th through the 9th. Stand up, Pastor Cody. Woo! <laughs> Pastor Cody has been hosting a, a miracle crusade now for how many was this our gonna be our fourth our fourth year the fourth annual <laughs> Miracle Crusade in Paducah that's a tremendous uh, meeting to be able and easy to get to all of the folks in the Midwest, it's always a, a packed house there in Paducah. There's a lot of hotels. It's it's a great location, but just a great church, hungry church, and uh, they're ready to, to draw and receive with you and believe with you. So join us for that meeting or... If you're in Canada or up in the Northeast, we've got Mississauga, Ontario, August 25th through the 29th. And we've got more locations and dates still to come. There's some things in the works for some new locations. So we'll let you know about those. This morning, we wanna go ahead and receive our regular church tithe and offerings. So my congregation, make sure that you have that prepared. I'm not gonna do a sermon, but I would like to let you know, can you hand me that piece of paper? Something that we have in the foyer at our information center. Recently, we had a precious minister come here and minister on a Tuesday night, and that is Pastor Craig Fields, all the way from Ontario, Canada. Yes. And he ministered a wonderful message on tithing. How many of you got to hear that message? Raise your hand. Wonderful. If you hadn't heard that message, I would strongly advise you to go listen to that message. I, I've listened to it twice, three times now already, once here and two at home and just feeding on it. But he was so kind uh, and generous to list out uh, these 10 blessings of the tithe for us. He taught on them and then he listed them and printed this sheet out. And we have this in our four years. So if you're visiting, most of our congregation have one of these. You can avail yourself, take one, they're free. They're in the foyer at the information uh, table right there on top. Is that correct? Right on top of the, the desk there. Okay. Uh, you can get these and they're wonderful, uh, 
10 points. He, again, he goes into detail. So just because you have the 10 points, you want to go back and listen to the message uh, because he, he takes each one and really shows us in the word and goes through the word on these. Uh, and so he, he put a quote uh, that Pastor Nancy uh, gave on here on this sheet. And it says, tithing separates you from the world system and the lack of money. So tithing is a, a separator. The, what goes on in the world, I'm separated from their system. I'm set apart in a different way of operating, right? A different way of thinking. It's a different flow of my heart, a different flow from my finances, a different flow for my family. I'm in a different flow. That, that flow that comes across that television is not my flow, amen? For the tither, that's what belongs to us. It's really a higher flow. It's a higher flow. We're coming up. Amen. So that's out there. We wanted to, to let you know you can take one of those ushers. Go ahead and come forward and let's prepare to wait on the people. Actually, they let me know we've got offering envelopes that are church envelopes. So if you would like to take one, if you want to give church, we don't want you to use the DM envelopes. They said use the, you already did. If they already did, just write. World Heart WHC on the front of that envelope. <laughs> Just don't put it in the offering at the end of the service. We're gonna receive a special offering at the end of the service for Brother Richard. Um, but this is the church offering. So I see many of you taking those church envelopes. That's fine. If you didn't, if you filled out a, sec a, a different one, that's okay too. Um, you don't have to put it in an envelope if you don't even wanna do that. So uh, we'll have you go ahead and fill those out. You can give at text to give up there, 951-900-3991, WHC. You've been maybe giving to DM guests all week or DM, it's WHC, uh, DufresneMinistries.org slash give. Uh, again, our checks made out to WHC. Are you ready to give this morning? with a heart of gratitude and thanksgiving for what God has done for you, what he's doing right now for you, and what he has ahead. Ushers, go ahead and come forward with those offering buckets. Let's prepare to wait on the people. Hold your offering up. Let's worship him this morning. Father, we worship you. We thank you that you're our provider. We thank you for, the, for what the word has already said is ours and given us, and we lay hold of that this morning, that every generous giver, Father, we know that all grace, Every favor and earthly blessing comes to us in abundance. Devil, you take your hands off of the finances of every giver in this place. You take your hands off of the open doors of financial opportunity. You take your hands off of the lost funds that are being restored back in multiplied fashion. And we thank you, Father, for the harvest, the abundant harvest that belongs to us. And we say the angels of God, the ministering spirits are out gathering, drawing it in, bringing it in, opening the doors. And we thank you for it for this morning, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Ushers, go ahead.
Hallelujah. It was over 40 years ago God sent me to be a student at Oral Roberts University. And as students, we got to attend chapel every week. And my favorite was when Dr. Roberts would minister and Richard Roberts would minister. I had no idea when I would sit there as a student and watch on that platform that one day he'd be in our platform, that I would even have a church to be able to invite Richard Roberts to. And so we go way back. We, my husband and I used to be on his broadcast in the 80s, and I'm so grateful to watch God early on in your life put people that are strategic in the plan of God for your life. And this man is strategic in the life of this ministry and the Dufresne family. And I love something in Miss Reba Rambo, of course. We're glad to have you again, love. Thank you so much for being here. And I love something she said in the worship session. Um, I think it was at the ladies' conference. And she made this statement because she was in a service in some, some respect with Catherine Kuhlman. Well, Richard Roberts learned to flow under that healing ministry the way he flows from his dad, but also from Catherine Kuhlman. And Miss Reba made a statement to those that were in the session. She said that Catherine Kuhlman said to her, when I lay hands on you, to impart everyone who has laid hands on me to impart is imparting to you and when I read the commentary of John Wesley on Romans chapter 1 verse 11 for I long to see you that I may impart you can look at people's lives and know if they're behind in impartations because it will show up and there are some things that you can only get through the impartation of being around a particular anointing, being around a particular man of God, woman of God. You have to be present. There are certain things that can be received, of course, over airwaves, absolutely. But there's even more to have in the presence when somebody lays hands on you. But I love what John Wesley said in his commentary on that verse. He said, impartation can happen through the laying on of hands. It can happen through the preaching or teaching of the word. It can happen through conversation. What's it mean? Words are carrier of impartations. So when we're sitting in the service today, we're receiving of the impartations of this anointing that's upon this man of God, and he is honored in this house. But all of those, he... He that I know of is one of, you probably count on one hand, the number of people that are still carrying on from previous revivals. His dad was a keynote person in that healing revival. And we're sitting under the flow of someone who worked side by side there as a child, but also as a young adult, as he began to step into the plan of God, worked along with his dad. So when you're sitting here and I bring in these men of God, I've got you in mind so that you don't skip, a generation isn't skipped of what is imparted. And so don't leave yours in the seat. <laughs> Grab it, take it, because it can happen through what you take out of the words you hear today. And you're receiving of the greatness of God in the men of God. And I just say, Brother Richard, we love you beyond words. But not only that, I, I, I want to say to the camera, Miss Lindsay, we love you. She's, I don't know, you know, we called him the member, but she's the member too. And so they are honorary members of this congregation and so valued. So Miss Lindsay, we love you. We appreciate you. Thank you for letting him come. We, her, her, her ministry is such a blessing. But you don't get anywhere that God has for you alone. And so as we receive this morning from him, know this, we're receiving of those that imparted to him, Catherine Kuhlman, Oral Roberts, the leaders of the of the healing revival and not only that i've said to brother richard in the back room i said do you know such and such 
Uh, he goes, yeah, I preached their building dedication. I, I am so stupid asking if him, if he knows anybody because he knows everybody. I asked him, I said, you know, uh, have you ever, do you know of David Oyedipo? You know, over in Africa, I guess the largest church in the world, I don't know. Uh, they're building a building of 100,000, seats 100,000, and they have multiple services a day. And he goes, yeah, I did his building dedication. I said, okay, I'm going to sit down and shut up right now. <laughs> but I mean, this is the caliber of man that how many, how many, I don't know how many presidents and heads of state, how many? 35 that he has been invited to meet, prayed with, laid hands on. I'm talking running nations, people. This is, this is how good God is blessing us this morning. You say, well, you're making much of a man. I'm making much of the, God, of the plan of God in the man. And all of that is available to us to receive from that place. And, you know, if you want to participate in something, you have to honor it. Without honor, you're, 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 you're relieved of the whole thing. But you have to honor to receive of something. And that's not really understood as it ought to be but in this house it's understood and so we love you brother Richard and uh, come and just do whatever God has and we'll go with you there Amen. lift your voice Shendi ata na kasi oro kusum rakasa. Shela mana na kasi ta kasto oro kusodia. Shana na kisi ata na kaso oro kusodia. Lift our voice in tongues this morning. Kina si brakasa. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Shela mana na kasi ta kasta. Soro oro kuso oro kusodia ata na kasinda kasta. Sebra Cassidi at an Acassara Seti Ananacassum Brocoso Cosodia. Make room for the Holy Spirit. She di Ananacassam Bracassata Cassia. Shoso Brocoso di Atanacassia Sandra. Oh, the glory. Fills this place. 
Moses said to God, let me see your face. And God said, no, but I'll show you my glory. More than anything else. I want to see his glory. I want him to be glorified through me. I want him to be glorified through you. The glory. What's happening here today is not happening in many places. You can't feel what's happening here. You're dead. <laughs> but you've come to the right place to be resurrected. <laughs> If you want the glory in your life, you're going to have to look for it. You're going to have to pray for it. You're going to have to prepare for it so you can walk in it. That's what I want. I want the glory of God. I want, when I walk into a room, I want people to say, something has changed in the atmosphere. They said that about my father. That when my father, Oral Roberts, walked into a room, everyone turned because they, they, they knew. They might not know how to explain what they felt, but they knew something had entered the room and it wasn't a person. It was the glory. It was the anointing that he carried. When I was 19, on my way to hell on a banana peel. <laughs> he laid his hands on me. And he said, I had no idea that the anointing for healing was on my son. Well, I didn't have any idea either. And he began to prophesy, as he often did, in his own way. And he said, I see you standing before kings and queens and presidents and prime ministers all over the world. I see you operating differently than I have operated. He said, you will not be laying hands on people like I have done, but you will have the operation of the word of knowledge and you will speak and people will be healed. He said, there'll be a power that comes up in your chest and it will come out of your mouth. And when you speak, people will be healed. He said, you have crowds overseas much bigger than what I've had. And he said, you'll see the glory of God. I rolled out of bed because I'd been ill and I got on my knees and I began to say, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. I repented of my sins. I asked Jesus to come into my heart that night. I was baptized in the Holy Spirit began praying in tongues and interpreting the way the Apostle Paul taught in 1 Corinthians 14, and my life was transformed. And I came into a learning period, a growing period, a maturing period. They say that you have three specific areas of your life, three phases, three stages. The first stage, you're learning. The second stage, you're doing. And the third stage, you're teaching what you've learned how to do. I'm in the third stage. I turned 75 on the 12th of November. I'm in the third stage. And I'm just getting started in the third stage too, by the way. And I thank God. And I, I, I am so honored and so blessed to get to be here. Uh, I am so grateful and I'm humbled by what you said. And I feel like I'm walking in pretty tall cotton. <laughs> if you'll let me use that Oklahoma saying. With uh, Pastor Nancy and with Kenneth Copeland and with Jesse Duplantis. Uh, wow. I can't imagine any place else but being here today. And I thank God for it. Give the Lord a great shout of praise. David, God bless you and thank you. Thank you all. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated. Praise God. <laughs>
Reba, it's been a long, long time. So, too long. Too long. Blessings. I love you. Love you too. Gosh, I've known her family since the 1800s. <laughs> Praise God. I heard this story about this husband and wife who died and went to heaven. And they're standing at the gate and they see the walls of Jasper, the gates made out of pearl. They see the gold streets. They see the angels. They see the heavenly host. And the husband turned to the wife and said, honey, if we hadn't eaten all that health food and taken those vitamins, we could have been here 10 years ago. <laughs> oh. Praise God. Well, what shall we do today? <laughs> you know, I believe in planning, but you also have to be spontaneous. Yes. I am an evangelist. Uh, I have been known to teach. I've been known to preach, but I am an evangelist. And evangelists are more spontaneous. They make notes, they hardly ever look at them. <laughs> Um, I was up last night making notes on the back of a back of a piece of paper that I found in my briefcase. Uh, you know, I, I don't I don't know that I'll I'll ever get to it. This is must be a sermon I preached somewhere on the other side. I don't know. I don't remember preaching it. So I made some notes. I don't know that I'll stick with it. But uh, praise God. Open your Bibles to Acts chapter three. Someone who has chest pain. You have chest pain right here where my hand is. Whoever you are, would you just stand up right where you are right now? You've got chest pain right here. See one there. Anyway, yes, yes, several of you right now in the authority. Here comes healing now in the authority of the name of Jesus. You know, you never know when God is going to manifest healing. He can do it anytime he wants. In the name of Jesus, I... Ooh, glory to God. I send that word. That chest pain leaves you now. That chest pain leaves you now in Jesus mighty name. Hallelujah. Now just now try to find it. Try to find the pain right now. Do whatever you can. Just try to find the pain. You're going to find it's leaving you right now in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God. I won't take time to read this entire passage, but I want to, I want to make some comments on it. And then I want to share some things with you, and I'm not going to take too long. Because he who speaketh short shall be invited again. <laughs> A group of ministers came to my father's home, as they often did, and they all wanted to have a word from Oral Roberts. And one pastor said, Brother Roberts, what's the best advice you could give me? He said, preach shorter and minister longer. That's good. That's right. Preach shorter and minister longer. Many ministers today preach all the way up until the cafeteria is open. And then they close. Instead of taking time to minister. Preach shorter and minister longer. I thought that's some of the best advice I ever heard in my life. Praise God. This is a most interesting passage of scripture Peter and John, let me just paraphrase it. Peter and John are on their way to the temple to pray. When they encounter a man who has been crippled since birth, carried there every day to beg for money, he could find a good place because he knew that the Jews would be coming into the temple and they'd be in a giving mood because they wanted to receive forgiveness when they got inside. And when he saw Peter and John, no doubt he put out his hands. Because that's what beggars do. That's what cripples do. They put out their hands. And Peter and John saw him. And Peter said, silver and gold have we none. Now, I don't believe that Peter was saying he didn't have a penny in his pocket. I believe what he was saying was, it's not money that you need. Someone else here may need money, but you need something else. But such as I have. Now that's the scripture verse that I want to focus on this morning for a few moments. Such as I have. 
I give unto you. What did Peter have? First of all, he had a relationship. He had a relationship because he had been with Jesus. He had been with the Lord. He had a relationship. If you want the glory of God in your life, you got to have a relationship. It's not just Sunday morning or Sunday night or Wednesday night. It's every morning. It's every night. That's why the Lord has been getting me up each morning about four o'clock to have a time of special prayer and usually a time in the evening of prayer and then prayer off and on during the day. I think when the Bible says uh, praying always in the spirit means you are in a spirit of prayer. You may not be praying every moment of the day, but you're in a spirit of prayer where you can break into prayer at any given moment. And in my experience, I'm called on to pray wherever I am. Just the other day, I went up to pray for a man in a local hospital in Tulsa, and I thought my prayer time would begin when I got on the floor, but instead, I was surrounded by people when I got in the lobby. I was laying hands on people as I was getting onto the elevator because they recognized me. And when I go up into a hospital room, I usually wind up ending up in several other hospital rooms because people will will say, he's on the floor, come out and come into my room. And what might be a 10 or 15 minute trip could turn into an hour. Instant in and out of season. Be ready, be prepared. That takes a relationship. That's knowing Jesus on a first name basis. That's knowing who he is, what he stands for, and how that ministers, how that ministers through you into him, into them. So therefore, Peter had a relationship. The second thing he had was he had an experience. He had seen Jesus heal the leper. He has seen him raise the dead. He's seen him multiply the loaves and the fishes. He'd seen him walk on the water. He had had an experience. He was there when Jesus said, let us go over to the other side of the lake, knowing that they couldn't go under because they were going over. He was there when that when they touched, when he touched the, the, the beer of that, uh, of that funeral procession near the coffin, he was there. He was there when Jesus cleansed the temple. He was there. He was there. He had had an experience. Have you had an experience with the Lord? Many people can talk about the experience they had 50 years ago, 40 years ago, 30 years ago. Have you had an experience today? Today, the Bible says now faith is or faith is now. The only kind of faith that God recognizes is the now kind of faith. It doesn't matter what happened 50 years ago or 40 years ago or 30 years ago. What's happening now in your life? What are you doing for Jesus today? Today is the day of salvation. Thank God for the testimony, you know. Thank God for that. I thank God for my own testimony. I shared a portion of it a little while ago. But what's important is what I'm doing now. (laughs) It's like uh, Dr. Lester Summerall, a wonderful friend of our family. Dr. Summerall was a tremendous man of God. Established a great work because of a a miracle that happened in the Philippines. Established that great church which is still pastored by his nephew, whom I know. And Dr. Summerall was was the man who influenced my father to conduct a national crusade in Manila back in the 1950s. And they were great, great friends. And um, <laughs> funny story, uh, I'll get to this. You know, Brother Copeland can tell three stories at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm working on my second. <laughs> my dad had a crusade in South Bend and Dr. Summerall was the chairman. This was before the Manila Crusade. And each night, my, my dad received the offering, and Brother, Brother Summerall saw all of his people in the crusade, and he knew when he got to Sunday, there wouldn't be one penny in his offering. He said, Earl Roberts, he'll take every dollar out of all my people, and he said, I became more dejected every night because I knew there'd be no offering on Sunday because Brother Roberts take all the money and leave town. And he was so dejected and when he got to the church on Sunday, he just knew nothing was going to happen. He, he called my dad later and said, Brother Roberts, Sunday was the biggest offering we had in the history of our church. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. yes. 
right. Seed faith works. Yes, it does. Yeah. Seed right. faith works. So uh, now I was going to tell another story about him. So Dr. Summerall told me, we're having lunch one day in South Bend, and he said to me, I was invited uh, to speak to an anthropology class at Notre Dame University. Wow. Now, Notre Dame is in South Bend, right. very prestigious Catholic university right. there in South Bend. And he said, when I walked into the room, the professor who was hosting the class said, Dr. Summerall, I want you to know that everyone in this room believes that we descended from monkeys. That was his introduction. And Dr. Summerall, quick as a wink, said, well, you know, it's not nearly as important where you came from as where you're going. Amen. Amen. It's about today, my friend. Yes, thank God for the experience you had years ago. But what about your experience now? Okay. He had a relationship. He had an experience. He had something else. He had the name of Jesus. Jesus gathered his disciples together one night and said, before now, you've asked nothing in my name. Ask and you shall receive so that your joy may be full. Now they had seen him ask. They had heard him cry, Abba, Father, but they had never asked in his name. He was giving them the power of attorney to use his name. He was giving them the divine right. Now I know my wife, Lindsay, is watching this program. and I've told this story before. Uh, when we got married on the 11th of January, which is, which is uh, our 44th wedding anniversary, is next week. I know I don't look old enough, I've been married 44 years, but I have been. And uh, we'll be married 44 years next, next Thursday. When we got married, she took my name. That's the custom in America. She took my name. She was Lindsay Salem, who was born in Flint, Michigan, and transferred to Florida as she got into high school, and then moved to Tulsa to go to law school, and we met and we got married, and she was no longer known as Lindsay Salem. She took my name. She became Lindsay Roberts. And very quickly, she learned how to use my name on checks, <laughs> on credit cards. She knew how to use my name. And it didn't matter whether I was with her physically or not. She could use my name. And it was just like I was standing there next to her because I gave her that right to use my name. Jesus has given us his name. He said, you've asked nothing in my name. Ask and you shall receive so that your joy, joy unspeakable and full of glory, so that your joy may be full. How many of you want your joy to be full today? I don't want a half full cup of joy. I want the whole cup of joy. I want it overflowing in my life because I've got a relationship and I have an experience and I've got the name. Peter said, such as I have. What did he have? He had the name. Yes. The name of Jesus, whose name is above every name, name in heaven and earth. You name any name, and the name of Jesus is above it. Come on. Yes. His name is higher than cancer. Yes. His name is higher than diabetes. Yes. His name is higher than hypertension. Yes. His name is higher than arthritis. Yes. His name is higher than COPD. His name is higher than blindness and cataracts and glaucoma and deafness and intestinal problems and colon problems and pancreas problems. His name is above every mass, every tumor, every growth. His name is above. We have a name. And at that name, every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. He had the name. But he had one more thing, friends. He had the authority to use it. He had the authority. Are you aware of the authority that Jesus has given us? He said, behold, I give unto you authority, power to tread upon serpents and scorpions. He wasn't talking about spiders and snakes. He was talking about enemies. I give you authority. He did not say everything you pray for is going to be healed. He said, no, it's going to be subject to your authority. Or in other words, it's going to take two to tango. You're going to need somebody to set their faith with you. 
A lot of times I pray for people and they just sit there and they just, right. well, okay. Right. If you can do anything, don't be like that. That's what that man was like with his demon-possessed boy. When Jesus came down from the Mount of Transfiguration, after that a great experience with, with Elijah and Moses appearing, and Peter, James, and John being wiped out, they didn't know what to do. They had to hide behind a rock. And when they got down into the valley where most people live, most people don't live on the mountaintop. They live in the valley. When they got down to the valley, the man said, well, I, I tried. Your nine disciples tried. They couldn't do anything for my boy. If there's anything you can do. And Jesus said, it's not if I can do anything. It's if you can believe. You got to have someone to go into an agreement with you. An agreement takes at least two. You can't have an agreement with yourself. He gave them the authority and the power. And Jesus, of course, said to the man, well, yes. Yes, I have the authority and the power, but do you believe? And the man said, well, I, I do believe. But I have this one little area that I'm having trouble with. And isn't that the story of, of many of us today? We believe, but we got this one little area. We got this one little pocket of doubt. Help thou mine unbelief. Help me in that one area that I'm struggling in. I've got an area like that. You've got an area like that. Yes, sir. That's right. You better tell the truth and honor yes, the Lord. Yes, you know you do. Yes, Every one of you, you got a little pocket there, somewhere in there, somewhere in there. It just, yes, sir. It's just like a pocket. It's just dangling out. Yeah. He said, help, help me in that area. You know, Jesus, yeah. it, it, he, he's so merciful. Yes. When we just admit it yeah. and we get that out of us and we say, now, Lord, I, I got to have help in this area. Yeah. I've got to have help. I've got to have help to do what God's called me to do. Yes. Pastor Nancy has to have help. Yes. Pastor Craig has to have help. Pastor Jay has got to have help. Pastor Chris got to have help. Pastor Mitch got to have help. Yes. But God didn't call you to do it all by yourself. That's, right. That's, right. That's, right. That's, right. That's why I sent us the Holy Spirit yes. to be your helper. Yes. Yes. Not only to be with you, but to be in you. Yes. He had authority. He had the authority and Jesus took that authority and he commanded that to come out of that boy and that boy was healed. I want you to know something. Peter and John did what you and I are called to do. We look at Peter and John and we put them up on a pedestal. Is there some type of, of great person? Well, a little bit later in the scripture, you'll find that they, they said they saw that they were ignorant men. They didn't go to Stanford. They didn't go to Harvard. Come on. Yeah. Hello. Amen. They haven't been to a place where they've been indoctrinated in the wrong things. They haven't been to places that have gone away from their founding. Come on. Come on. Amen. And that's all I'll say about that. No. No, no. He said they learned, they were they were unlearned but they had been with Jesus. Peter and John had the same thing that you and I have. If you just exercise what you got. He said, such as I have, I give unto you. And he reached out his hand and said, in the name of him whose name is above every name named in heaven and earth, rise up. Peter started him by lifting him. But about the time he started to lift him, the healing power of God hit him in his feet and legs. Got to get, someone's got to get into an agreement with your prayer. I was preaching for Brother Blair years ago, Charles Blair in Denver, Colorado. And there was a woman who was wheeled down the aisle in a wheelchair sitting right here next to where Pastor Debbie would be. And in the healing service, I was praying for people, and all of a sudden, the Lord said, tell her to start moving her finger if that's all she can do. And I'm sure there were those in the crowd that were thinking that's a very cruel thing for Richard to do, to tell someone in a wheelchair just to begin to move one finger. And I watched her, and she just started doing this. And I prayed for others, and I looked at her, and she was doing this. And I prayed for others, and I, I saw her doing this. 
next thing I knew, I saw the wheelchair was empty. Yeah. And she was walking across the front. Amen. Amen. I had to get her into action. Yeah. Yeah. Peter reached out his hand. He was saying, give me your hand. And when he did, the power of God came this way and also came this way. Did you know the power of God can move two ways at the same time? It can move down, it can move up. The power of God came this way and hit him this way. It was a double whammy. So much so that the man leaped to his feet and began to praise and worship God and went into the temple with them. And the religious leaders went berserk. They didn't know what, in fact, they, they don't, the world does not know what to do with the power of God. They put them in hold until the next morning. It took them the next morning to figure out what they were going to do with them. Finally, they called and said, we, we, we can't deny that a notable miracle has been done. But we're telling you, don't do this again. Don't teach or preach in this name. Now that's what the devil wants you to stop. He didn't care how many you have in Sunday school. He didn't care how many buses you run. Devil didn't care. He didn't care what social programs you have out in your community. The devil couldn't care less about that. That's right. That's right. As long as you leave out the name. He said, don't teach, don't preach in that name. Peter said, whether it's right to listen to you or listen to God, you be the judge. But we cannot stop from speaking the things which we have seen and heard. He had a relationship. He had an experience. He had the name of Jesus and he had the authority to use it. Now, Peter did not have anything that you and I don't have. Well, that begs the question then, why isn't it operating in my life? It's because you haven't decided to allow it to operate. There's nothing special about Peter. As a matter of fact, Jesus picked him because there was nothing special about him. He was a man full of doubt. He was a man full of fear. He was a man full of worry. And yet Jesus picked him. And Jesus has picked you. He has selected you and he hasn't selected just those of you who minister in the pulpit. That's right. Because he said, you shall lay hands on the sick. And they shall recover. And when you think of sickness, don't think it only as physical. That's right. One of the biggest physical or spiritual needs today is mental wellness, depression, discouragement, people that are lost. They're in a vacuum out there. They've come out of a world system that isn't working. They don't know where to turn and they've turned to drugs and they've turned to, to, to all the pleasures of the world and they don't know what to do and they need someone to show them. And you and I are called to be that purpose, that, that person. Now you can say all you want about Oral Roberts and you can say, and I can say all I want about the fact that he, he told me that his anointing, uh, that when he went to heaven, his anointing was reserved for me and me only. He said, others will stand up and say, I have Oral Roberts anointing. He said, that's not true. He said, the anointing is generational. He said, the anointing that Oral Roberts has carried is reserved for his son and his son only. And I was in the room when he went home to be with the Lord and the angels came and took his spirit up out of his body. I watched it happen. I saw them come into the hospital room and I saw what appeared to be a mantle float down and I took hold of it and said, that's mine. Amen. 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 And no one can take that anointing from you unless you surrender it. But don't think there's something special about those of us who minister. We're just human beings. You have the same power. Yes. You have the power that Christ raised from the dead. You have that power in you if you'll just use it. If you'll just believe. Praise God. The older I get, the more I, I begin to understand and the more I, I, I learn how to teach what I have learned and what I have done all these years. And I'm having the most wonderful time of my life imparting now imparting uh, in the lives of ministers around the world uh, 
uh, our brother here from Pakistan, uh, uh, Silas, excuse me, uh, Brother Silas uh, is uh, ministers in, in Montreal, but he is Pakistani and, uh, and has contacts w- with, pa- with Pakistani pastors. I didn't know there were so many pastors in Pakistan. It's a Muslim nation. But we had a, we had a conference together with pa- in Pakistan, 15,000 pastors. I've never seen a group of pastors like that in my life. And for three days, I had an opportunity to pour into them on healing, the Holy Spirit, and seed faith. And he was my interpreter. I didn't know he was going to be here today. He flew here from Canada, as you did, to be a part of this service. And he and I had had a, a session like that in Saudi Arabia. And we had a session like that right down by the Afghanistan border. And, uh, and we're also going to do one in Bangladesh one of these days. And we've been doing them in India and in other places. And I did one in the Ukraine while the war was going on. I'm, I'm doing what I'm saying. I'm not just talking about it. I'm doing it. But I'm not trying to bring any glory to me. I'm giving the honor and the glory to God. Because without him, I can do nothing. But with him, I can do all things. Through him who strengthens me. Now, I came here this morning to give you a word of encouragement. Come on. Peter said, look on us. Okay, it's all right. We pastors, we ministers, we say, look on us. And then let your faith take over. Yes. And believe. So good. Praise God. Hallelujah. Who needs healing this morning in some area of your life? Someone who needs healing, stand up on your feet. If you need healing today, healing in your body, healing in your mind, healing in your emotions, you need healing in some area of your life. It may be physical, it may be financial, it may be emotional, it may be in your business or your job or your ministry or or some other area of your life. It may be depression, it may be discouragement, it may be fear, maybe worry, anxiety. Maybe it's your kidneys, maybe it's your colon, maybe it's your eyes or your hearing, or maybe it's in your feet or your legs or some type of neuropathy, or, or perhaps it's in your back or your shoulders or your feet or, 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 or your knees. It may be a swelling or, or maybe a mass or a tumor or a growth. We're in a place today where a corporate body of believers have come together believing the same thing. Yes, yes. And that doesn't happen in many churches either. We are in one accord. And that's what made the difference with the disciples. Jesus said, go into that upper room and come together in one accord. That doesn't happen many places, but it's happening here. It's happening in the churches of these men and women who are seated here at the front. It's happening in our ministries. And we've got to share that. We've got to teach that. We've got to pour that out of us. And there'll be plenty left over after we pour it out. Yes. That's true. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Because there's an un, unending supply. Yes. And this morning, I want to pray over you. And I want to believe God. So, Father, right now, it's not by might and it's certainly not by power. But it's by the Spirit of God that I pray this prayer. Now, there are shoulders that are being healed right now in the authority of the name of Jesus. And there's a loss of hearing that's being healed right now in Jesus' name. Those are words of knowledge. In the name of Jesus, every shoulder that's causing discomfort, every pain, come out. And come out now in Jesus' name. Now you can just begin moving your shoulders. People are going to begin to find pain leaving shoulders right now. Loss of hearing in the name of Jesus. Come out. Your station tube, eardrum, open up. I send the word into your ear for hearing now. Yes, I'll do that, Lord. I rebuke every glaucoma. I rebuke every cataract. I rebuke the dim vision. In the name of Jesus, come out and enter again no more forever. Now, let your faith move as I'm praying. Join me in this prayer. This is not a solo thing. Join me. This is a congregational thing. Join me in this. Because one can put a thousand to flight, two can put 10,000 to flight. In the name of Jesus, I speak against every tumor, 
every mass, every growth in the authority of Jesus' name, come out. I take hold of you, you mass, you tumor, you growth. I take hold of you with my faith and pull you out. Come out and enter again no more forever. Yes, Lord, I'll do that. I speak to platelets. Platelets be in the right number of thousands. I speak to hemoglobin, be healed. Come up to the normal level. I speak to every red cell, every white cell, be in balance. I speak to every outlaw cell. I rebuke you and command you to come out and go to the uninhabited places of this earth where you'll walk among the dry places until your time comes. I speak now against every cell that is out of line. I speak for the kidneys and the liver to function normally in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you that the pancreas produces the right proper amount of insulin in Jesus' name. I speak to the colon. I speak to the intestines. I speak to your gallbladder in the name of Jesus. Be healed today in Jesus' mighty name. Yes, and the, the pain that's in the feet and the legs. In the name of Jesus, I speak to the feet and the, and, the, and, yes, and the ankles and to the knees. In the name of Jesus, every trace of arthritis, every swelling, come out now. Come out now. Come out now. In the name of Jesus. And there it goes. All that arthritis pain come out of the feet, come out of the knees. All the swelling go down. The inability to, to, to walk properly, that, that ceases now in Jesus' name. Hips. Hips, hips, sciatica, hips be healed in Jesus' name. Backs, discs, vertebra, in the name of Jesus, be healed. And I send the word to you. According to Psalm 107, verse 20, which says, He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I speak to hearts. Hearts that are enlarged, hearts that are in AFib, hearts that are skipping beats and that are not in proper rhythm in the authority of Jesus' name, heart be healed. Yes. Heart which is enlarged, come down to a normal size and beat regularly in Jesus' mighty name. Blood pressure, blood sugar, in the authority of Jesus' name, I come against the attack. I rebuke the high blood pressure. I rebuke the low blood pressure. I rebuke the low blood sugar. I rebuke the high blood sugar. In Jesus' name, every trace of diabetes, every trace of hypoglycemia, come out in the name of Jesus. The hypertension, the blood pressure problem, be healed. Regulate in the authority of Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I take hold of this depression. This depression that makes you lose sleep and, and worry and fret. It's put big bags under your eyes because you're not resting and it, 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 it's, it's weighing you down on a daily basis. I take authority over the depression and the discouragement because what has happened, because of what has happened. Maybe it's somebody else's fault, maybe it's your fault, maybe it's nobody's fault, but it's happened. And it's, it's knocked you down and you feel like it's over for you, but you felt like if you could get to the service today, someone, would speak a word to you. And my friend, I am that someone. I send that word against every depression, every discouragement. God did not give you a spirit of fear or discouragement or depression, but instead he gave you a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. You're not going crazy. The world may go crazy, but you're not going crazy in the name of Jesus, because you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You were made only a little bit lower than the angel. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you and gives you the ability. And greater is he who's in you than he that is in the world. You are not an accident going off somewhere to happen. You are specially chosen and God has a gifting that he's placed in you and it's no different than the gifting that has been placed in me if you just use it. Praise God. Now just begin to lift your hands and give him praise. Every breathing condition, come out. COPD, asthma, emphysema, 
Be healed in the name of Jesus. Every pain, come out. Come out. Come out. In Jesus' name. And I set my faith with you now. Now, friend, I can't say anything more important to you this morning. I set my faith with you. You have someone in me who will set my faith with you. And you also have someone who will not come out of this agreement. I'll stand with you until the miracle happens. I will not quit. I will not give up. Every day I'll be telling the devil, get the hell out of their life. <laughs> Hallelujah. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. And oh, the joy, the joy that floods my soul. Receive your healing. Something happened. And now I know he touched me and made me. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. And oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something happened, and now I know he touched me and made me Now there are feet that are being healed today. You need to examine your feet. There are ankles and knees that are being healed. You need to examine yourself right now. Check it out. There are hips that are being healed right now. Pain has been in shoulders and backs being healed right now. Vision is coming in eyes. Hearing is being restored. Pain is leaving. Examine yourself. See, what, see what's going on. If you're being healed, it'll stand up to an examination. Just examine yourself where you are. Now who can tell? Who can tell? A healing's happening right now in me. I mean, you know, you can tell it's happening. I mean, you can tell there's a difference. Who, put, raise your hand. If you can tell there's a healing, put your hand up. If you know there's a healing, come on down here to the front right now. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, line up behind me. Come on. Oh, he touched us. Come on, line up right here. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. I mean, if you can tell there's a healing, come on. Come on down here. Come on. Come on. Come on. You believe in healing? Come on. on the end down there. What happened to you just now as we were praying? What happened, sir? My hearing has been restored. Your hearing? My hearing, yes. Hearing restored. My hearing has been restored. What, what happened to you? It was blood pressure. I can't tell right now, but I know emotionally, spiritually, mentally, I feel free. Well, freedom is a feeling. Yes. <laughs> what happened to you, sir? I feel renewed. I feel a new lease of life. Renewed? Yes. What happened when we prayed? My, my left shoulder has been painful since um, six months, and I feel free. I can, the pain is gone. Pain's gone. What happened to you? My tailbone was injured, and now I feel so much better. Praise the Lord. <laughs> it's going to be so nice to sit, isn't it? Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know, you use your tailbone a lot, don't you? <laughs> and when it's out of whack, wow. What happened when we prayed? Uh, pray? For my grandson, my two-year-old grandson. Oh, you wanted your prayer for your grandson? Yeah. So you I took just, that prayer for yeah, him? Yeah, I took it That's for good. him. 
uh, he has a hernia. They want to do surgery. Well, we set our faith with you for him. Check him out when you get home. What happened when we prayed? Oh, several days ago, my shoulder is uh, so painful, but now I'm healed. Praise what the happened Lord. when we prayed? I was weak and sick in my feet, neuropathy. And you sick. heard me say neuropathy? Yes. My pancreas, everything I've had. But today, I feel so much better. What happened to you? Shoulder. My shoulder, shoulder was in pain for Notice how many a few shoulders? weeks. And when you call it, I just started moving it. And I can't even feel it. <laughs> pain's gone? Yeah. The pain's how long gone. had it bothered you? It, about two weeks. Two weeks? Two to three. I think I slept on it wrong. I lift hoses when I work. And so it just was bothering me. I woke up and Praise I can feel the pain. And the pain's not I have some advice for you. Sleep on the other shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to you? Mine is the same as my brother right here. I've been having pain in my shoulder and my neck for a few weeks now. And it's totally gone. Gone. What happened to you when we prayed? Um, the clicking in my knees are gone. Clicking? Yes. And um, my doctor gave me some gel, steroid, and I was like, I'm not, I'm not taking it. I'm coming here. I mean, literally, the clicking. You Pain's can... gone? Absolutely. Son, what happened to you? I hurt my leg, and then, like, if I touched it, it was, like, really short. The back of your leg? Yeah. And so, you said legs. So I was like, praise God. I stood up, and I felt the back of my leg. I felt the back of my leg, and it's not snowing no more. It's gone. Now that's that's faith right there. Yeah. I want that childlike faith. Yeah. You know, you tell a child to believe something, they just believe it. Yeah. Yeah. Tell them there's a Santa Claus, they believe there's a Santa Claus. And then you have a hard time telling them there's no Santa Claus. <laughs> what happened? I have neuropathy in my left foot that has affected my balance. How can you? What happened I'm, now? I'm walking straight. You're walking straight. I'm walking straight. What happened to you? I got peace in my mind. I have been now, let me tell you what, that's a healing. Yeah. When you feel peace in your mind, I remember, oh, I'm, Pastor Nancy, I must have been just a little boy. The former manager of the Philadelphia Phillies brought his wife into the prayer line. And I was standing right there. And my dad prayed for, for the man's wife. She, she had she had almost lost her mind. And when my dad laid hands on her, she was completely restored. And, 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 and I remember when she said, she said, I am myself again. And I remember her husband, this, this older gentleman who had managed, what well, had managed several major league baseball teams, including the Philadelphia Phillies. And in those days, I think it was the St. Louis Browns before it was the Cardinals. And, uh, and he, he, he was weeping and he said, I have my wife again. You know, when you, when you get peace of mind, that's healing. We oftentimes think of healing only as something physical. A lot of people need healing in areas you can't see. Thank God for that. What happened to you? I'm taking it all. My eyes, my ears, my heart. Oh, you're taking it all, huh? I'm taking it all. Okay, well, we'll just give it all to you then, in Jesus' name. What happened to you? Uh, I just turned 75. I asked God for an overhaul. I can't stop shaking. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you're welcome, but I didn't do it. We give the glory to God. Uh, yes. Amen. Praise God. What happened Thank to you, you, man? I had surgery on my foot six months ago, and I, can, I don't have any pain. You had surgery <laughs> on your foot, now you have no pain? I haven't been able to do that in six months. You haven't been able to do what? Hot. Just hot. Show me again what you couldn't do. Come out here a minute. Show the people what you couldn't do. Come on, come on. What happened to you? I walked in with heartburn and I- Heartburn? I, heartburn down myself because I had a stomach surgery that's been causing a lot of heartburn. And I took two pills before I came in and they usually take 24 hours to kick in. And I've been swallowing and I haven't felt it when I received it. It's gone? It's gone. Praise God. I get heartburn when I watch the news. <laughs> laugh at me so do you <laughs> what happened tension between my eyes and my neck and my shoulders it's between gone. your eyes your neck and your shoulders yeah. what difference can you tell now it's just there's peace there's it's peace. what there's peace there's pain? it's just calm oh a calm yes 
Praise God. What, what happened to you? Let's see. What happened to you, ma'am? I was losing feeling and balance in my right leg, but when you prayed, I felt a tingling in it, and now my leg feels really good now. Thank you. Ma'am, what happened to you? I had tremendous pains in my fingers. I couldn't bend them, mm -hmm. and I can bend them now. Yes, I thank God for that. Yes. What happened to you? Uh, I just really needed healing in my mind and thoughts, and I could feel that that's changed now in the good thoughts. way. <laughs> a lot of people need healing in their thoughts. Praise God. You know, you can't, you can't stop thoughts from coming, but you can arrest them when they do. Yes. You can say, no, I will not entertain that thought. No, I will not do that thing. You have that. I imagine Jesus had thoughts too. Because the Bible says he was, he, he, he felt what we feel. Okay. But he didn't entertain the thought. He didn't invite it to dinner. Okay. He didn't sit down and have a conversation with it. He said, no, he took authority in Jesus name. And we can handle a lot of those thoughts. If we'll just say, no, devil, That's it. no, That's right. you're not going to have me, you're not going to have my family, you're not going to have my body, you're not going to have my finances, no, 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 you're not going to have my family, no, 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 no is a good word. Amen. Yes, Jeff. I received a healing from my heart. For your heart. I remember when you stood up back there. Ma'am, what happened with you? I received a healing in my hip and my knee and my ankle. Your hip? Your knee and ankle. And your ankle. Pain's gone? Yes. What happened to you, ma'am? I um, was recently diagnosed with diabetes and I could not hardly feel my feet or walk very well. And I had a lot of pain here. When you start praying, the pain started leaving me and my stomach's been going down and I could feel my feet. <laughs> I just want to praise the Lord. I feel new blood, new blood and new kidneys. Yes. Okay, I've got a scripture for you. It's in the Old Testament. You're going to have to look it up. You shall not be polluted in your own blood. Amen. Oh, All right? I'm not sure. I, I, I don't nobody know where that is. I, I just I remember quoting it, but I don't know where it is. It says, you shall not be polluted in your own blood. Amen. Pastor Craig will find it. That's your scripture, okay? Yes. I shall not, say, everybody say, I shall not be, shall not polluted, be polluted in my own blood. Isn't that a good scripture to confess? Anyone having a, an attack in your blood? What, what is it? Ezekiel 16, 6. Ezekiel 16, 6. Shall not be polluted in my own blood. Uh, Pastor Jeff? Most of it is for my cousin Cindy. She's in the hospital right now for heart pains from COPD. So you came up for her. Yeah. But we send the word to Cindy right now in Jesus' name. And we believe with you for her healing. What happened to you? Um, I've been in bondage with depression for months and when you prayed I just felt relief and I felt hope. Yeah. Hope. I felt hope. Uh, yeah, the Bible says he'll give you a hope. Let's just stand together and begin to worship the Lord. Sheila Mananakasia. Liba Kasatamakasa. Something happened, and now I know he touched me and made me Do you have a relationship with him? Yes. Are you having an experience yes. with him? Are you aware that you have the name of Jesus and the authority to use it? If you didn't, you do now. Now, just hearing it is not enough. The Bible says that we are not to be just hearers of the word. We are to be doers of the word. That's why there is a school here, a Bible training center here. That's why Pastor Nancy felt the leading of the Lord to have a Bible training center. Brother Terry is the leader of that school. I have taught in that school before, several times. I'll teach again if you invite me. Uh, but that's, 
What's that about? That's about sending out. Jesus sent them out. And what she and others here are doing every year, they're sending them out. And the, those students, many are in this congregation today. And the, you, you just came back for the next semester, isn't that right? This, you just came back from the, from the Christmas break. That's what this school is about. It's about sending out laborers because the fields are white under harvest. Now, the most amazing things to me is, is uh, when, I, when I'm overseas, uh, people come and get healed and then, then they, then they want to get saved. Lots of times people say, well, no, you can't get healed unless you're Christian. Well, the Bible doesn't say that at all. In fact, when Jesus healed the blind man, they came to him and said, do you know who healed you? He said, no, but I want to. He didn't know Jesus. He didn't know who he was. He just knew someone prayed for him. So lots of times healings happen in the lives of people who don't even know the Lord. Then they come and they give themselves to the Lord at that point. So every head bowed, every eye closed. Lord, don't let a man or a woman in the World Harvest Center today. Don't let anyone here leave without making a personal commitment of their life to Jesus Christ. Lord, don't let one be lost. Don't let anyone who has run away from God and feels about a million miles from God and be feels separated from God, don't let them leave here, Lord, without recommitting themselves to Jesus. As I told you earlier, I gave my heart to the Lord when I was 19. I've never regretted a day of it. And how I thank God for what he has done in my life. And he's no respecter of persons. What he's done in me, he will do in you. But you've got to take a step forward. The Bible says you must repent. And what is repentance? Repentance means a change of mind. Repentance is not a change of your heart. You can't change your heart, but God is not going to change your mind. It's a change, it's really a change of the position. It's taking, it's taking uh, the real you and putting it, uh, uh, instead of you being in control, putting it back into subjection to your spirit the way God created you. That's what repentance really means. It's a change of position. And I want to pray for those of you who've never made a commitment of your life to God or you've been running from him and you'd like to recommit your life to him today and you'd like me to pray a personal prayer with you. If you would, then I want you to take the first step right now. Hold your hand up. I want to pray for you. Hold it up high. Now you with your hands raised, step out in the aisle. Come down here and stand with me real quickly. Come on. Come on. Come on, right now. Lord, don't let one be lost. Not one. Come on. Come on, sir. Come on, ma'am. Come on. This is not about numbers. It's about not missing anybody. Someone else, you, you want to be in this prayer? If you do, come right now. All right, stretch your hands out toward him. My brother, pray this prayer out loud after me. Oh God, oh God be, merciful be merciful to me, to me. A, sinner, a sinner, a backslider. A backslider. I've, missed the mark with my life, I've missed the mark with my life, and I repent. I'm sorry. I ask you to forgive me, cleanse me, and make me new. Today, I surrender my life to the Lord. And I declare, and I decree, that I'll never be the same again. I have put my trust in Jesus. He's now my Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. Somebody give praise to the Lord. Step to the prayer room right now. Praise God. Be seated for just a moment. Are we having a service tonight? Are you preaching or am I? Me? Well, I don't have any idea what I'm going to preach on. That's all right. I don't have a clue. That's all right. That's good. That's good. You know, I tell people that. They say, you're kidding. No, I'm not kidding. I have no clue. What time are we starting? I'll know by seven. Are you glad you came to church this morning? Yes. The scriptures say, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. 
Praise God. I'm so glad to be here. Thank the Lord. I brought some resources out in the lobby. I understand a lot of them are already gone, uh, which is a great problem. Uh, I brought some things, Pastor Nancy, that I've never brought before. I brought a, a, a CD called Your Secret Weapon, The Unlimited Power in Every Believer. And I brought a little book called uh, Biblical Promises to Declare Over Your Life, A Prayer Covering. If ever there was a time we needed a prayer cover over us as Americans and Canadians, we need it now. And also I, bought, I brought a book called Thrive, Eliminating Lack in Your Life. And those are out in the lobby. And I pray and believe those will be a blessing. I'll be in Paducah in three weeks, okay? Maybe. Huh? No, yes, you will. <laughs> He said, maybe. <laughs> Pastor Morgan, Pastor Nancy, I've done all the Lord. And by the way, I didn't preach any of these notes. Maybe tonight. The thing I so love when I sit under Brother Richard's ministry, I love how we're fed through that evangelistic office we need to recognize the different ways god meets our needs through the different offices so we don't become rutted and only knowing how to receive from one office the pastoral office or the teaching office thank god i love that evangel the genuine article of the evangelistic office and i tell you he's one of the few that we see that is operating in the fullness of that evangelistic office because an evangelist is going to have miracles they're going to minister to the sick and so thank you so much for that brother richard um i have sat just since god has brought him in a more personal way into our life the way he operates under that word of knowledge has been an example that I have stepped into the exact same thing. It matters that you're around it. It operated in a measure, but I saw more accurately how to operate in that, especially with the television ministry, because you're not able to touch people. It's all by words. And so this is, this is the example that we have as ministers, and not only ministers, laymen out ministering to people, because it's not always appropriate to touch people in public lay hands on somebody but he's taught us how to speak that word and send that word and today we're we're sitting under what we what we read in Matthew 8 17 that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet saying himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses that it might be fulfilled which was spoken we've seen that demonstrated today as he has spoken God's fulfilling it amen well we want to give we want to receive a, a great big offering for brother Richard uh, today and you say well we've been giving offerings that's right because we're blessed enough to give to every good work never count yourself out of something God already counted you in on by saying we have enough to give to every good work amen and we we're going to receive that offering as we receive it making it payable to dm or whc it doesn't matter just make it to the church or to defrain ministries either one all of it will go to him and we will always add to it so we and we ask you to go ahead and fill that if you're giving out by check fill that out completely uh not to him but for this ministry and we'll get it to him there's also the text to give option you can text the word guest to the number on the screen or you can go to our website deframeministries.org slash give and you can give that way and we say to those of you who are watching live uh, be a part of this flow of the service and I trust that you acted as he was speaking those healing words you received it for yourself let us know about it contact us let us know what God did for you physically the healings you received amen Hallelujah. When you get your offering made out, let's hold it up before the Lord and let's worship him with our giving. How many of you know it's an act of honor? That what we've received today, it's an act of honor as we give back. Amen. Father, we thank you for that which we've received today. Now we're learning to be more skillful 
in that which you have for us to operate in flow in so that we can be a greater blessing. So we honor what we've heard today. We're not just hearers only, but we'll be doers of that which we heard. And as we give today, Father, we release our faith and we declare together that my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And everybody said, amen. Ushers, pass that offering bucket. Uh, say this with me uh, as that offering bucket goes your way. Say all the money that Richard Roberts Ministries needs, it'll come. All the money that my church needs, it'll come. All the money that I need, it'll come. All the money that my business needs, it will come. Amen. Because I always having all sufficiency. Always having, always having, always having all sufficiency. Amen. We remind you tonight, 7 p.m., you don't want to miss it. The doors open an hour before the service, so at 6 p.m., the front doors will be open. The sanctuary doors will be open 30 minutes before, so you can come in and get your seat, and you don't want to miss it because uh, we, the Holy Ghost always has something new and fresh and good for us. Amen. Stand with me to your feet this morning. Turn to somebody before you're dismissed and say, thank God for that healing power. And you can be dismissed. God bless you.